Hello everyone and welcome to Babwe Banter. My name is Robbie Durant and welcome to the craziest sports show that's coming out of Zimbabwe right now. Make sure that you follow us on all our, our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram and make sure you subscribe on YouTube as well. We've got a massive show coming up, international sport. We've got uh, local rugby, schoolboy rugby as well as Formula One and we're covering all of that but we've got some special guests as well. Uh, I'm just going to say a big, big Hello to Graham Phillips from Nourish Zim and Vita24. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Graham. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you need to book over there. First, <laughs> first of all, I want to say thank you so much for the invite to, to you and Matt and the team. It's a pleasure to be here and excited by the opportunity um, just to explain what Vita is, Vita24. Well, as you can see, we've uh, been graced with Vita 24s, we are also, Graham's going to be sharing something where we are giving prizes away for the top sports man or woman on a weekly basis, and it's exciting what we've got uh, th this evening. Right, next up, Dirk Fillion played 53 one-day internationals, uh, two test matches, highest test score of 38, and his highest test score as well in one-day internationals, 63. Uh, he debuted in 1998. He's now the general manager of Zimbabwe Cricket. Dirk, very privileged to have you on the show. Thanks, Robbie. Matt. Good. Yeah, thank you. Nice yeah. for coming, Rui. And uh, Matty, my boy, on the outside. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> you good? <laughs> Back in the house. <laughs> yeah. Right, we're going to start with, uh, with you, Graham, just discussing this lovely drink. Um, tell us a little bit about how it started in Zimbabwe and uh, how it's grown into, into becoming almost a household name. Sure, thanks, Robbie. Um, in September, about July, August last year, we, I went down to a long drive event in Benoni and I met the, the founding members. And Were owners. you long driving oh, there, my bud? I wasn't, unfortunately. <laughs> I had the, I had the Do you long tell us, uh, long putts. <laughs> <laughs> but I met Paul and Costa, who are the owners of the, the agency and the franchise, and they said, why don't you look at bringing it into Zim? So I, I, we bought a few boxes with my, uh, the franchise owner, Mike Burns from Bulawan. I'm not sure if you met him, you'll remember him. Great, great man. And we, we bought a, a, a pallet in as a test and we started putting them for long drive and people tasted it and we got the attraction. So we then got the agency and started bringing in in September. And nine months, we've got over 60 outlets in Harare that are, are selling it, school tuck shops, uh, blue chip restaurants, agencies, and it's become you know, very much part of a lot of people's lives. Well, no sugar as well, apparently. Just tell us a little bit about, about the, the content. Yeah, so it's probably one of the most unique uh, recipes in the world, especially formulated where it's no sugar, it's gluten-free, it's full of vitamins that are required for your daily intake. Um, it's not an energy drink, but it is a, it boosts, it does boost you up, it gives you the medical, I'm not going to go into the medical client, but it, it, it's a healthy drink, it's tasty, and there's four flavors, tangerine, red berry, lychee, and blue. It's a very healthy, it's tasty, and it really is about putting it out there. And you know, we, we're very open to the market. We support morning markets, uh, charity days like SPCA at Wag Zone. We've got a number of sports that we are doing some promotion work with, and uh, we're getting entrenched in the community. We've got something exciting as well, talking about uh, doing a competition on a weekly basis for the sportsman or woman in Zimbabwe that is doing fantastic work. Tell us about that. Sure, in, in conjunction with Vita Zimbabwe and uh, Nourish Zim, in conjunction with, uh, I'm going to get this right, Buffalo Creek Spur in Sam Levy Village, Borodale, we've, just, we've joined together to do a, a bit of a promo where Vita Zimbabwe will be donating two by six pack of um, Vita every week for a sports personality play of the week amongst the adult um, men. And uh, Buffalo Creek Spur will be donating a loyalty card and a, a voucher with $40 loaded up for the school sports uh, play of the week. Cool. Now, that will be decided by the banter team, um, and you'll come across in your discussion who's, who is a, got the privilege of that. The criteria will be that that person makes contact with us at our Nourish Zim Facebook page, or at our Instagram and TikTok, and then we arrange to meet at the Buffalo Creek Spur with this joint branding, and we'll do a bit of a promo in in support of that person winning that prize. Brilliant. Well, we're very privileged to have uh, Vita24 as well as Nourish Zim getting onto Bubway Banter and getting behind and obviously acknowledging those good sportsmen and women that are out there in Zimbabwe that don't really get enough exposure. Right now, 
we have got someone incredible and uh, Dirk Fillion, general manager of uh, Zim Cricket. And Dirk Fillion, on that point, don't you think that Craig Irvin should get that for this week? Ah, uh, I think we should well, have a vote. You were saying, <laughs> you were saying uh, a giveaway for grown-ups. Yeah. Um, did you guys not watch my touch rugby on Monday night? <laughs> <laughs> so was I not in the room? I think you were close, but I think Craig <laughs> takes the cake. Eh? I think Craig definitely does. I do. For this week, unbelievable. For, the, for yeah. this week. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, you can walk us through that? Yeah, I, I suppose the uh, Pakistan A tour to Zimbabwe was an opportunity for us to uh, blood some youngsters and, and uh, extend the opportunity for more players. And I think what happens uh, when we run bilateral tours, and bilateral tours being Zimbabwe versus a nation that come here and we play test matches or, or whatever the format is, the intention is always to win it. Uh, this tour was not about winning. It was about giving players an opportunity, and, and one being Joy Lord Gumbi, who has now been selected for the World Cup qualifiers. Um, but also for the players that were a, a shoe in anyway, and Craig Irvin being one of them, getting an opportunity against a quality team, which Pakistan A was, to make sure that he's ready for the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, is that the player that stayed with him in for, to make 90? Correct. Yeah, 93 yeah, got, with no, him. No, he got 100 in the first game. Okay, Gumbi, okay, yeah. Uh, the one that... Uh, so that he could be a previous, close... He could be close in for... The, <laughs> well, that was in his previous hundred, Yeah. So he got two okay. in three days. Okay. Uh, the other one that on the last game yeah. was uh, Innocent Kair. Okay. Who got 90-odd. Uh, so good to see him back in form. Yeah. Um, and if Craig uh, carries that form into the World Cup qualifiers, uh, mm. we'll be in a good space. Yeah, yeah. That's what we yeah. need carrying our team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Dirk, you've, you took over Zim Cricket. Um, you've made made massive strides. What have you done slightly differently uh, as coming in as GM and, and basically stepping in and, and taking the lead role there? I'm a little bit worried about how much accolade you give me uh, <laughs> on who's going to watch this. Um, so the general manager position uh, was afforded to me last year and um, you know as someone who has always and, and I think that the two of you are uh, rugby badgers, mm. um, I, I think I'm a cricket badger. Yeah. Uh, it will never get out of my system. Uh, it's in my family system. And, and the opportunity to give back. Uh, my main reason for the involvement is uh, I have a son uh, who's 16. And, and to make sure that um, when, when I'm not there or, or he finishes his career, that we're ensuring that youngsters within cricket have a pathway. And that's a part of your team as well, that you guys play in our, uh, in yeah, our very it, serious T20. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So after this week, maybe I'll up for another selection. <laughs> of, uh, of so, so my main objective is to ensure that we're giving a youth an opportunity within a career path. And our career path basically starts at schools that we're not totally involved in. Uh, we don't step on their toes. But we have a mandate to fulfill an obligation at an under-19 World Cup. Up. So a big drive to ensure that under 17, under 19 age group has national selection mm. at that point. Who's your national time. coach for under 19s? Uh, Prosper Utsaya, okay. the, yeah. the ex-international yeah. captain. Yeah. Um, and to make sure that then that pathway goes into provincial structures, so the five provinces that we have around uh, the country that are paired uh, into the Tuskers, the Rhinos, the Rocks, the Eagles, the Mountaineers, um, and then one day afford someone the opportunity to play for their country. Or for your... Uh, T20 team. Uh, well, yeah. if they make the if side, they make the team, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and it's not, it's not totally about every single player representing the nation, because that's impossible. Uh, some of us were lucky enough to do that, uh, but the provincial structures are as important. You cannot have a national team without a solid provincial structure. And if we can grow the game and make sure that there's opportunity for more youngsters, we stop the opportunity of youngsters wanting to run I think a selection structure too. Well, I, I think so. Yeah. But but I think the natural progression of all of that will, will play a will, part. Yes, I agree. Um, and some players will go overseas. We can't stop that. We just need to make sure that locally it's attractive. So to answer your question in a very <laughs> roundabout fashion <laughs> is, is to try and achieve that. Yeah. Is to try and achieve uh, cricket in Zimbabwe being attractive, that youngsters aspire to play for the nation and players that are currently playing want to stay here and, and don't see the allure of overseas. Well, when they do come back from overseas, they're well balanced. Uh, correct. Yeah. Good pun. Yeah. Yeah. Give that man a right to 24. I don't know if I was going to Get a right to 24, <laughs> Matty. Uh, right. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it's so important that parents do get behind their kids. 
uh, whether it came to training or whatever, I know you, you are right behind your light. I would say it's, it's, it's incredible to see how much you just invest in there. So that's a big, a big up Maybe to you Maybe one day well. he'll let his son bat in front of him, but that was, <laughs> we'll wait to see. Well, that's not an opportunity to give away very likely. No, it's um, not. Uh, so, <laughs> so when you have it in your grasp, <laughs> you don't give it, that eh? away. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the big question coming up right now is World Cup qualifiers coming to Zim. Tell us about it, where, when, how, and uh, what can we expect? So two venues uh, in Harare. We start on the 18th of July, even though there's some warm-up games prior to that. So the countries will play cross-pool warm-up games. Uh, two venues in Harare, Harare Sports Club and Takashinga in Highfields. Um, Takashinga actually looking very good. Um, so we're excited about that venue. Uh, Bulawayo will be Queen's Sports Club and BAC Grounds. Uh, frantic at the moment to make sure that everything is ready and, and in place for the qualifiers. 18th, it kicks off uh, two pools. Um, so well, Zimbabwe. Quick win, quick win no. no. Uh, okay. And Quick win has a challenge. Interesting enough, uh, Quick win is. Uh, um, so nice in, they named it twice. Well, correct. But not the field, obviously. Not, no, okay. the field is great. It actually has ICC okay. um, a stamp of approval. Okay. The challenge we have in Quick win is accommodation. Okay. So there's, there's other challenges that Quick win have, and, and those are problems that we can't solve totally. And when you're playing one rest day play mm. again, yeah. to drive out to quick, quick, come back and play. Well, at least now we know. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one reason. Uh, the, fi the two pools of five will play against each other. The top three in each pool will then go into Super 6, and you will carry your points into those. The teams that you have not played on the cross pool, you will then play them, and the top two will go to the final. Very simple. Uh, it's not a winner-take-all to the World Cup. The top two in the final will both qualify. The reason why we need a winner is that when we get to the World Cup in October in India, uh, the winner of the qualifier will be in Pool A and the runner-up will be in Pool B. Just quickly before we end, getting into the World Cup for Zimbabwe cricket, that's a big, big step up for, for you guys, just from a, from a structural point of view as well as obviously the opportunity. It's not. Uh, it's actually a disappointment that we're not there already. So the, the, the top eight countries in the world all qualify automatically. Uh, our strategy in the next couple of years is to ensure that we do not play in qualifiers. This uh, is one day. All formats. Yeah, but so I'm saying this World Cup. This now. World Cup is one day. one day. Because of our results in Australia, the next World Cup T20 next year in uh, West Indies and America, mm -hmm. we do not have to qualify. Yes, yeah, so and, and those are the standards we should be setting. I think pie in the sky, assuming we're going to win a World Cup, we're not there yet. Yeah. But to say finishing top eight, that we can achieve. So moving forward, that will be our goal. It's not we don't want to be playing in World Cups, but we have to maintain eight and above. Mm. Brilliant. Well, just quickly, Dirk, before you go, Zimbabweans watching out there, what do you want to tell them with this coming up? The support, uh, the support is always brilliant, but uh, this must be exciting Zimbos and, and cricket fans and Zimbos in general. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we, we just uh, hope that the crowds will come out and support. You know, it's more than just cricket. It's, it's our nation hosting a World Cup, 10 international teams here with some great names, an opportunity for uh, our players to showcase and for Zimbabwe to so show some shungu. We've done that for so long. Um, and now it's on our doorstep. We complain about, well, we don't complain, but we have issues that we don't get to host big tournaments. Here's our opportunity. Let's get out and support Zimbabwe. Please. Right, so Mas, you've got to get stuck in. Sorry, if I could just, I, I was at the privilege of being at the Bangladesh One Day Games, and the pride in the country cricket is back there again, you know, of cross-cultural. And I'm just so proud to, to see the development. And I was in Cape Town for the World Over 50 Cup where Vita 24 Suffolk were sponsors. And to see Stuart Carlisle and the Goodwin brothers getting back into cricket at, at over 50s, at over 60s. So, I mean, it's good to see that cricket is alive and uh, we're so proud to, to yeah. be supporters of Zim Cricket. Well, that's a wrap-up of our interview here with uh, Graham Phillips. Thank you very much. All the best with Vita. Thank you for the support on Babwe Banter. Uh, we can only wish all the best for you as well. Good luck, Dirk. Uh, I know you've got this. You certainly have got it. Coming up after this, we have got archers, Zimbabwe archers, uh, Bryce Hill and Shane Hill. They're going to be uh, chatting to us about their, uh, their experiences. They've been to Switzerland. They've been to South Africa. That's all coming up. And uh, a couple of our boys also try to shoot the arch, uh, whatever you call it, the arch. And, uh, yeah, it was a little bit dismal. Coming up next. Babwe, babwe, Right, we're back with Babwe Banter, and we've now got Zim Archers who have been to Switzerland, they've been in South Africa, and uh, we want to 
introduce Bryce Hill and Shane Hill. Bryce, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for having Shane? me. Shane? Yeah, good to well, be here. Well, let me tell you, we did a little bit of uh, stuff outside. Maddie, just tell us a little about it. It was exciting. It was. It was a very close race, I must say. Um, <laughs> the only difference Which race was, was this? Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, listen, we all had three shots, and uh, one of our hosts managed to plug the balloon, except we were at 10.456 meters, and he was at 60 meters. So it was a slight difference in distance, but uh, he managed to pull it off in the third shot. We do know that when they were setting up, it got cooler and obviously a little bit more windy, so it wasn't as easy. But it also wasn't as easy for us, if no, you know no, what I mean. That was hot. That was hot. <laughs> first time ever holding a boat. Uh, I mean, you're telling the Oaks to hold it at an angle, turn it like this. It's like they were going to take over a, uh, a ba rob a bank. You've got to hold your gun at the side, you know, like you're one of the hoods. You've got to put your hood on, hold it to the side, do this, do that. So, you know, but it was exciting. It was fun. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we're going to be showing you the footage a little bit later, but this, this youngster from 60 meters on his second shot plugged the balloon. So it was the third shot? Listen, don't third cheat shot. for them, Rob. Third shot. Rob? No, we, we like to take the... <laughs> and our the, cameraman the was basically standing about two meters from them and just kept on saying, move back, move <laughs> back, boys. <laughs> and he said, I've got this, I've got this. But remember, Tiger, Tiger Woods also has Shanks shots, eh? Right, everybody, we're here for the Bubway Banter Challenge, and we've got Bryce going at a cracking 60 meter. Let's see if he can hit the balloon. Over to you. Um, tell us quickly now, uh, Bryce, the, the road that you've gone through, and obviously thanks for coming, coming out to Bubba Benton. Yeah, thank you. So, like, I've started actually like a couple years ago, um, started when I was like nine, um, and kind of just, I was honestly terrible. Probably worse somehow than Where's the today. Where's the JJ? Where's the JJ? Um, and I just, like, I just really enjoyed it. Um, so I just practiced a lot, trained really hard. Um, and then, so after two years or so, I made the in-school Zim team. Um, and then from there, I placed third in Namibia uh, for junior in-school. Um, and then I just, I got a bit tired of the sport. So I started looking for something new um, and I picked up a different type of bow. And suddenly I went from shooting 10, 15 meters to 50 and 60 meters. Um, and from there, it just skyrocketed. We went from, so we did 
did a competition in Egypt after I'd been shooting for about two years. Uh, after four years, we were in Poland at the Junior World Champs. Earlier this year in February, uh, it was Switzerland. For a month, we were training at the World Archery Excellence Center. And now, later this year, Ireland again. Are you still at school? Yes, I am. I think this should be our, um, our winner, Maddie. So that means you don't go to school because you just spent a month in Ireland. <laughs> no, we have to homeschool him. Because, uh, okay. you know, the schools don't, don't really like it when he uh, takes a month off. So we're homeschooling him now. Okay, so let's, Shane, talk about the journey. Obviously with him, you, you his coach, uh, you've obviously walked with him. Obviously also uh, the lows and the highs. Um, tell us a little bit about the journey. It, it's been a very difficult journey to, uh, to get him to where he is. Um, we don't have enough uh, archery coaches in Zimbabwe. So I'd, I left for Egypt in 2018. Um, I did my level one uh, archery coaches course. A year later, I did went to Switzerland to um, World Archery Excellence Center for my level two. Then I was gonna do my level three, but um, COVID hit and then we couldn't travel. So COVID, COVID has, has been, been a, a big problem for us, you know, traveling when we went to, um, Poland for for world champs uh, two years ago uh, it, it was a big challenge just trying to get there SRC clearance all these things that uh, uh, put spanners in the works but we, we managed to get there and he did really well he was ranked 57th um, when we leave for Ireland which is world champs in a month's time we hope he's going to do better than that yeah okay so let's talk about that trip because that's important to you guys um, the support that you're getting are you potentially getting support I mean do you need more support how do people support you so literally I I have to fund and finance everything myself I we have no sponsors um, we have approached uh, win and win who are the his bow is a win and win bow to try and get some sponsorship out of them. Um, they, the World Archery Excellence Center, we got to know a few people while we were there and there's different steps to get um, some sponsorship externally because it, it's not coming from anyone in Zim. Is it open? Open. He's an open age now or is he still so a junior? So he's under 18 at the moment. Okay. So uh, the world champs is junior world champs. Mm -hmm. um, he will probably represent Zim in Tunisia for Africa Games at the end of the year. Um, and in the open junior Africa no, Games. It'll no, it'll be the open, the, the okay. open because okay. we don't have enough archers here to, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. compete. And that's at that long or just at both? So he'll move back from 60 to 70 meters. Okay, all right. So, so a bit harder than it was today. Yeah, just a, Same, a, so a little bit harder than it was for JJ. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <slightly, laughs> only slightly, yeah. Okay. But Bryce, just finishing off, um, the opportunity to go to the World Champs must be a massive opportunity. Oh, yeah, no, it is, it's just amazing. And you really get a scope of just how big the sport is. Yeah. From here, yeah, it's like you've got maybe 10 archers online on a good day, and there, there's... 200 archers and they all know exactly what they're doing and, yeah. and just to put that into perspective there are countries like i think is it china there's certain countries that they are like so they take so up the majority where it, that's their thing hey the two biggest countries uh, mm. in archery at the moment are korea mm -hmm. and usa okay so it's korea and usa so and yeah. they so they just they've got so much support mm. so korea the national sport is archery okay i thought it was china so korea yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah and they yeah. Yeah, so they've yeah. got a lot of backing behind them, mm. and they are just... And they pretty much take options. up the top rankings in the world, and then everybody else tries to slot in with America and, and everyone else a bit yeah. a bit, yeah. yeah? Currently at the moment, so the top archer in the world currently, he's just overtaken USA, and he's a guy from Turkey. Okay. So it's possible, like, okay. we yeah. intend to yeah. be up there one day. Yeah. Cool. If uh, one of our listeners are listening and they want to contribute, how do they contribute? Uh, Bryce has got an Archie um, Instagram page. If you page. can just give that, that your or, Instagram page. Well, we'll put it on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. from okay, cool. through you guys. Guys, good luck with World Champs. Good luck. Uh, you've got your head switched on. I've got to tell you that. And uh, Coach Dad, uh, all the best for, for the trip overseas. Right, coming up after this, we've got the Mad Bunch on the show. We're going to be chatting international rugby, everything, all sport. It's coming up after this. Babwe, babwe, banta.
Welcome back to Pipe Web Banter. We've now got a crazy bunch of oaks on the stage here, guys. Let's just talk a little bit. Uh, Munashe, how's it going? How's it? JJ? Robbie, how's it going? You good? good and good. Uh, Fundi? What's up, Robbie? Hi, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been on the show the whole time. You've been on the show the whole time, man. Hey, hi, everybody. Hello, Maddie. How's that? How's that? Hello, Maddie, my boy. How's it, everybody? Hello, Maddie, my boy. Are you fine? Yeah, just in case I missed segment one and two. Here I am. Live. Right, Maddie, while we're on you, Temba Gorimbo, first Zimbabwean to win a UFC fight. Yes. Uh, how good is that? How good is that, eh? He lost his first one, managed to come back and, and get a win, which is brilliant for him. Uh, we asked him to come on the show or at least talk to us. He said he's a bit busy at the moment preparing for his next fight. So we will talk to him after the next one. And, um, yeah, I believe there were some miscommunications between him and Zimbabwe Sport. Hopefully they can sort that out. I believe there was a uh, wrong telephone number. Uh, if he's in Dubai, you don't put plus 263, Baba. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but anyway, let's hope they can sort that out. And yeah. uh, hopefully Zim Sport can get behind him. We want a Zim flag walking into the UFC. Absolutely. We don't believe a Zim, uh, Zim sportsman should be walking in with a South African flag. No. If he's from Zimbabwe, give him a Zimbabwe flag. We want Come to on. see Babwe Banta Come on, on UFC. Whoa. So there we are. Excellent, yeah. Merit. Uh, Temba... Gurimba, Gurimba. Yeah. Uh, when you get back here, please come in here and make sure you got your flag and make sure your number is back to plus 263. Yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> Francis Ngamo, uh, he has just been signed an exclusive contract, uh, the Professional Fighters League. Mary, you can yeah. highlight that as well? Yeah, so um, at least Oaks are getting it. You know what I mean? We, we've got the talent in Zimbabwe. Oaks need to get those contracts and it's so good for him. It's great. That's what we need. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, going on to rugby, our schoolboy rugby, there's uh, big stuff happening this weekend. Three big games, really. Um, JJ, there was a bye this last weekend. Big stuff happening. Yeah, no, no games this last weekend, but uh, a lot to look forward to with schoolboy rugby this weekend. We've got three big games coming up. We've got uh, Peterhouse traveling all the way to Falcon. They're that's going to be a match. That's going to be the big that's one massive, this weekend. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then we've got uh, St. George's playing Lamagandi. That's also where they're playing. Do you know? At uh, in Gandhi, yeah. In Gandhi, in East, East, that's also going to be. A and then guy. we've got uh, Saint John's against Prince, Prince Edward. Edward. Yeah, where so, they playing? Do you know? That should be at Prince Edward. At so, Prince Edward. Yeah, East, East, also, so, those are all no, hard. No, it's a St. John's game. game. St. John's, oh, home game. St. John's. So, St. John's home game. Three big games coming up this weekend. Yeah, those that's are, big games. Yeah. Those are tough. Big games. So make sure you check it out. Uh, obviously, Bubble Banter will be covering who the best player was of this weekend, Maddie? Are there some big guys uh, stepping well, in the now up? we've got to step up. We've got to start looking into this, Ooh. eh? Yeah, JJ. And, and we know that... <laughs> JJ, Zim under-18s were chosen, Zim under-17s, as well as under-14s. And, Rob, out of them, there were, I think, five, if I'm not mistaken, players that were chosen out of schoolboys to go to Zim under-20s. Brilliant. Yeah, to go to Sean D'Souza's uh, squad. So they might, people might be looking at the squads thinking, where's that guy? Yeah. But they need to look at the next level and have a look because uh, obviously there's some Churchill boys that might be in the under-20s. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, just uh, saying. Right. We were, anyway. we were really disappointed with uh, the game was here again, for the Goshawks versus SV Atier. Um, JJ, obviously last minute, game cancelled. It's really unfortunate for our Zimbabwe rugby side that they have to miss games because of finance. Yeah. Well, this last game was cancelled uh, due to logistic issues. Um, mm. They had uh, booked border. They were supposed to play border, but that game got postponed. So they have committed to playing border next weekend, which is why they had to cancel uh, SWD. Yeah, look, Rob, it's a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money to organise a match. Absolutely. And um, look, to bring it just to give you an idea, it costs about $35,000 for those guys to come here to play us and to go back, okay, for one day. So I know it doesn't, you know, if you're not a rugby supporter, think about spending $35,000 just to bring those guys here and when it wasn't exactly planned exactly. Um, so we do understand, um, you know, why it happened. It, it, hopefully... Bigger sponsors, like we've always been asking, can get involved where 35 grand isn't a lot. It's just, you know, one machine running for a day or something. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, we do understand and uh, big up to them. One thing we would like to ask is, could the under-20s please play the Goshawks? Please. Yeah, Please. That, Give them some game time. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Can we have that game? Yeah. And everyone can come out and watch that. That would be an absolute cracker. And we could do it at yeah. Sports Club and everyone would come to watch that. Well, let's talk about last week's game. The under-20s played against uh, OGs. Yeah. Um, he was trying different combinations. He mm. said this weekend now he's 
his team is full. Mm. Got some big players in mm. there as well. Mm. Um, no, well, that that's was because a good all of their Rochelle's players were playing against twenties. our barbarians. Uh, that's a good call. <laughs> that's a good call. And the 20s. And the 20s versus Goshawks. Uh, a, a Come on, game. people. Come we boys. want to see that match, please. Remember, yeah. you've got to get onto our social medias. We want to hear from you on Facebook as well as make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel as well and also on Instagram. Right, guys, we're going to cover international rugby in a bit. Uh, just quickly, local soccer. Fundi? Um, it's, it's, it's what you expected. Um, Gezi's still topping the, the charts and they're, they're doing really well. They played Dynamos at Baobab uh, Stadium. It was a very interesting game because Dynamos hadn't won, uh, hadn't scored in the past uh, four games. Uh, they had they had their game uh, scoring, uh, but then still losing to Ngezi, who are still topping the charts. So not much movement there, but um, it's, it's looking it's looking good though for for Ngezi. Mm. Nice to have those big games. Wow, mm. well, Ngezi. Got the money. Mm. Yeah, it really, it got really the does come yep. back to. And they got the win. That really does want. come back yeah. to the to the, to finance. You know, when yeah. you really have the the support financially, you could really um, achieve really well. Maybe we're gonna have the Bear Bear rugby team on it these days. Well, <laughs> talking about finance, we are looking for a major sponsor here on Bubway Banter. So if you can hook us up, and uh, you'll be on all our socials, uh, the bugs, you name it, uh, we'll look after you. But we're banter. Uh, you can hit us up on our socials if you want to sponsor as well. Come on, boys. Yeah, right. Uh, Munashe, soccer, the international soccer, what is happening across uh, the globe? So pretty much all the leagues have finished now. Uh, all, the, all the teams played their last games over the weekend. And who won those, Munashe? Uh, uh, going to Spain, Barcelona won the La Liga. Uh -huh. And that's their first one since Messi left. Yeah. That was the wild coming, eh? Yeah. Uh, so then, if you, then going to uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bayern Munich, mm -hmm. they won their 12th straight. Yeah, so that one was expected, <laughs> eh? <laughs> is, uh, oh, they so it's like a dictatorship. <laughs> That's unlike the Germans. <laughs> so they would have thought. Uh, the team that came second was uh, Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. They almost won it, actually, because yeah. on game 37, Bayern slipped up, they, they got beaten, then Dortmund won that game. Yeah. So it was like a... So it was like one of those things like when they were about to win, they were like, where's yeah. the sword? <laughs> and they were like, we better lose us or we're losing our homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then <laughs> Dortmund then drew on the final game, then Bayern won it again. So okay. that, that was number 12. Okay. Just joking, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, looking at our local boy, Marvellous Nakamba. Yes, it was a brilliant goal. Yeah, yeah. 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 very good goal. Yeah. He got his team up to... The yeah. Premier League. Yeah. yeah. And this is their first time in yeah. Premier League. Did you check and walk off and just go, hey, yeah, watch yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wow. so good, yeah. yeah. That was a good feat. Yeah, it was so good, They even yeah. dubbed it as the most expensive football game because yeah. they won. And the most expensive last shot. Yeah, because yeah. they got like 200 million off that. Yeah. So, uh, like, wow. so it was like the, the Wicknell shot. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, yeah. but pretty much uh, that 200 million, I think most of it will go into like uh, re-upping the stadium mm -hmm. to get it uh, up to Premier League standards. Yeah. Like, you know, like quantity and like, you know, yeah. basically yeah, yeah. to make it up. They'll get a good following. Yeah, they will. get yeah, a yeah, good yeah. following because yeah. it's like a town. Yeah. It's coming in as a little yeah. town, so yeah. it's more stable. Like you said, I mean, you've got these huge giants that are finally, people are starting to, to come in and yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a change in the old, yeah, which so is nice, you so know, it's not that old stuck in the past. Of, yeah. Mm, football has sort of changed how it was back in the day. Mm. Now there's the financial mm. aspect into it, so it's like, it's going big. Yeah. Now clubs can can afford to spend like 500 million. Uh, but you talk about that. I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, Manchester United spent about 2 billion and look at them. <laughs> Tell us about that, <laughs> Munash. The thing is, if you, if you look what at was the United strategy there? <laughs> what was the strategy? Uh, Do hey, tell us. Uh, if, if, if you look all over social media, yeah. you're just going to see uh, Astor glazes out. The current owners, they were sort of treating United as a company mm -hmm. rather than... Yeah, so just buying players, yeah. not for who's selling So it was more of they're making profit at the end of the day, yeah. like their books. They were uh -huh. making profit on the books, uh -huh. but not... So we didn't even have a proper football director. Mm -hmm. Each time the manager that was in charge is saying, no, I want this player, that player, they just get to... Well, you look back at, the, at, at uh, Liverpool selling the, the guy that assisted... Yeah. Uh, you know, why yeah, would you money. sell? Why would you sell him when he was the one person that won you everything? It was only about money, yeah, and he, yeah. he, I mean that. And now look at them. And now the, they, you look at every goal. All you, you know saw was <laughs> was what's his name? Salah. Salah running around tuning air. It was me, but who it assisted him, every yeah, single it goal? It was the guy behind him. Yeah, yeah. And they go and sell him. And now look what he's doing for the other club. Yeah. He is unbelievable. They, it's now, just a stupid now wants, move. Now he actually wants to come back to 
to the Premier League. Yeah. It didn't really work out there at Bayern Munich mm-hmm. because, yeah, I think you wanted Maybe to Maybe Mrs. Join Salah. You. No, he actually wanted to leave. <laughs> they, they, they had an altercation with uh, Leroy Sunday and yeah. he actually punched him. Oh, really? So True. Go, I think he wanted to join UFC. No, he misses, he misses <laughs> Salah. Because <laughs> well, Salah's a nice guy. We've been waiting for someone with a good knowledge on soccer. Thank you, my man. That yeah, was you're very, welcome. You're welcome. Very, yeah. Yeah. very good. Manashe is coming second. So <laughs> Manny, just quickly, you were at the Jamboree. Oh, I mean, we were at the Jamboree, massive. Robbie. Yeah. I don't yeah. No, it was so good, eh? We got a bunch of interviews. I'm sure we'll have them uh, following after this segment. Uh, Who would have thought so many people would buy a Land Rover? You know? I've got a lot of jokes, but ish. (laughs) (laughs) You never know, they might just sponsor us. When there were 200 (laughs) people there with 200, I I, I don't know how many Land Rover, there was just Land Rover after Land Rover after Land Rover. And I was like, you've got to be joking. It was like on the roads with Toyotas, do you know what I mean? Except they park these and keep them (laughs) on the jamboree. But uh, fun, I met it. For for everybody, it was was good fun? It was absolutely amazing. It was so good. There was a lot of support. Well organized, uh, lots of fun. Yeah, it was it was it was very good. Yeah. Nice work. Everybody, we're back here at the Jamboree and uh, we've got Marius from CFAO Motors. He is the the director in charge, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the uh, cooperation and part in the in the show. How's it going this afternoon? Yeah, all good, all good. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, um, like I said, I'm Marius Brinsler. I'm the managing director for the CFO uh, Group companies in Zimbabwe. We're currently representing uh, Toyota, VW, Suzuki, uh, Hino in Zimbabwe. So uh, yeah, I mean, um, our involvement with the Jamboree goes back quite a long way, um, most of the last four or five years, um, and has just been evolving, um, especially after uh, we were deprived from some social events and, and COVID and <laughs> yeah. the rest of it. So yeah. it's, it's, very, it's very good to be back um, at these events and, and to see the amount of people just um, attending these events. No, no, very good, yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, so, so we're trying every year to, to just change things a little bit. Um, so previously we were just a sponsor and and and, and exhibitor. Uh, this year we decided we we're going to enter some teams. I believe your daughter is in one of the teams. My daughter drove the ladies section just now. Yeah. So she's uh, well, she's just set the fastest time. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going pretty well. <laughs> yeah, no, she she drove the little Suzuki Jimny. Yeah. Um, lots of fun. Uh, what a brilliant little car. Yeah, we had lots you. of fun. Yeah. Well. Lots of fun to be had by everyone, and we thank you so much for coming out. And uh, we'll support you. And uh, thank you from Bubbly Banter. No, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you very you, much. Enjoy. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Right, everybody, we're here with Bubbly Banter, and we've got cabs in the house. Mr. Raphael, tell us, what has cabs got to do with the Jamboree? Cabs has got everything to do with the Jamboree. We are really enjoying here, and um, we've seen quite a number of our partners. They are also here. And uh, most of our customers have been passing through our stand. They are also enjoying. So uh, as cabs, as you know, we are one of the uh, big banks in Zimbabwe. We finance quite a number of things. Is it your first show? Yeah, that was my first show. Your first show. So I'm sure I won't miss it next time. You won't miss it next time. Well, it's so good to have you on the show. And uh, thank you very much for coming on on here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm here with Gwyn Yai. Um, we are at the Jamboree, and he can tell us the full name of the brand and everything that you come with. All right, the company that is sponsoring this year, 2023 4x4 Jamboree, is called High Performance Loops. In short, we call it HP Loops. So it's called the HP Loops Castro 4x4 Jamboree. Basically, okay. You okay, you okay? Yeah. Basically, HP Loops is the authorized distributor of Castro in Zimbabwe. All right, and how many years have you been out at this jamboree? 
Like basically, uh, is Castro, uh, the brand has been associated with the 4 by 4 Jamboree since uh, its inception. I think that was way back, uh, it should be 94. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much for your participation and thank you for coming for the interview. And we wish you many more interviews out here. Thank you and, very much. Uh, yeah. Let's hope you can go with another 20 odd years, eh? Definitely. It was right. nice to meet you. Thank you very much, thank sir. Thank you. All, All right. right. Cheers. Everybody, we're back here at the Jamboree with Babwe Banta, and we've got Colin from Mashonaland Skydivers. Colin, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. How have you found the show? Uh, the show is lovely. Yeah. Uh, there's a good crowd. Uh, the cars are good, nice cars. Yeah, we're seeing uh, the old cars and we're enjoying. Cool. Um, and tell us a little, about, a little bit about the skydiving experience. How do we go about it? Uh, what's the story there? Uh, the story here is... Um, we are trying to keep uh, skydiving live in Zimbabwe. So we are, we're known as uh, Mashonaland Skydivers, part of the Zimbabwe Parachute Association. You here yesterday and today. How have you I found it? It's, ah, it's... The show is lovely. And today, I think we, uh, we've we got uh, more crowd today yeah? than yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, people seem to be enjoying the food stuff, the cars, everything. And the motorsports, you think it's pretty cool, eh? It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Motorsports is pretty Not cool. as adrenaline as driving out of a plane. But yeah, but it's pretty yeah. cool. Maybe without the cable connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or without a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Colin, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you very nice much. Nice to meet you too. We would like to have you on the show if you'd be keen to come one of these days. Yeah. And uh, we'll get in contact with you. Yeah. We're banter. We've got a supporter here, Natasha. Natasha, how is your day going? My day has been fun. How is yours? No, it's been very good. How have you found the show? I find it very interesting. You yeah. get to know, uh, to learn about cars, how powerful they are. It's something that I've never, you know, really paid attention to. So now I'm like, okay. This and is, is it fun. your first time? Yeah, this is my first time here. Yeah. I've heard about it, but it's, this is my first time attending it. And uh, any other Donnybrook shows? Do you come to them, the drags or anything else like yes, that? Yes, the circuit, yes. Yeah, you come to that. Yes. Eh? So you're a bit of a petrol head. I, I am. Okay, very good. <laughs> um, well, I'm so glad you've had a good afternoon and thank you for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to say to everybody out there? Just want to say thank you, guys. I had a good time. Awesome. Thank you very much from Bubway Banter. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. We're here with Babwe Banter live at the Jamboree. And I'm here with Sean Thompson, and he's here with his company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you very much, Matt. So Associated Tires, uh, also Pro Tire, is our retail branches. Um, we're here at the 4x4 Jamboree uh, this year. It was Zad Zad yesterday, um, being a Saturday. As you know, Zimbabweans love to come out on a sunny Saturday and yeah. get a couple of beverages yeah. in them. Um, but it's been a quality day today as well. Uh, yeah, lots of people as well, as we can see. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can talk to the Bobby Banta, eh? <laughs> anyway, um, so here we are, guys. Uh, brilliantly organized uh, day. And uh, thank you very much for coming out and having an interview with us. Appreciate that, Matt. Thanks very much for having me. Awesome. Cool. Have thank a great you. day. All Thanks right. to Bobby Banta. We just want to give a big shout out to Carbide from Babwe Banta for organizing us our VIP tickets to the Jamboree this weekend and uh, just appreciate them very much. Thank you for the shout out. Right, so going into our rugby now, the Barbarians uh, took on the World 15. Uh, that happened on the 28th. Uh, Eddie Jones was the head coach and they went up by 1940, sorry, I'm lying, 48, 42 uh, did the Barbarians win. It was win. close, Robbie. Tell us a little bit about it. So I do you not think, JJ, that uh, he had a little bit to do with who was selected for both teams? Yeah, definitely. 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 It was very islandish. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> it looked like yeah. an Arcadia convention. He's, go he's, going, <laughs> he's going back to his roots. He's going back to his roots. It, it, he chose um, serious, serious island blood, eh? It was very good. Um, yeah, I brought in some South Africans, some French, a little bit of Italian, whatever, whatever, but it was a very well contested game. Um, Izzy Falau, I mean, and he's still got it. Eh? He's still got it. Yeah. They want to bring him back for the World Cup. Yeah. I think Eddie's trying to get him into Australia. I think has he? Can he? I don't know. No. No. Is he Can't. banned? He's going to be playing. For no, he's not. He's not he's, banned. He's plays no. for uh, Samoa. Is it? Should be Tonga. Tonga. Yeah, oh. he plays for Tonga. Yeah. For Tonga. Israel Falau is Israel a beast. For, and he's a machine, bro. He played so well. Scored a try. Yeah. He's an absolute beast. Um, yeah, and put in the t he and um, Quade Cooper played fly half for, oh. and he had How an absolute cracker. Well, I don't know if you've seen some of his videos on Instagram. Now he's looking in condition. No, well, his skill level that's is his there. Fly half. I'm he's telling kicking. You now. I'm telling you now, that's brilliant. That's why he put him in there, yeah. and he chose some absolute cracker islanders so outside of him. Eddie they already are. playing strategic for uh, World Cup. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So Munster took on the. Stormers at home, and man, that was sad. Um, was it? JJ? <laughs> sad for the Stormers supporters, Robert. Well, um, yeah. 
Tell us about the game. Tell us about the, <laughs> tell us about the game. Yeah, I was supporting Munster because the minute Stormers win, um, they tend to get a bit excited and then uh, give and it to us. And there were enough South give, Africans. Give it to us for the Bulls losing. But um, Well, how many yellow cards? Two? Yeah, two on. Two yellow cards? Side, yeah. yeah. So but uh, a, a brilliant game. Um, I it, just was think, it was back and forth. It was, yeah. a, it was a great game. It Some was, brilliant tries. Was. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely Well, really the trust. World Cup is coming up, and we've got, uh, unfortunately, Michael Hooper, who is certainly becoming quite a stalwart as a captain, uh, could be out for the Wallabies 2023. That's a worry for Eddie Jones. Well, he'll, he'll finish up um, Super Rugby with the Waratahs. He'll be playing his last home game this weekend. I think he'll play the World Cup, and then he'll but go he, up. But he'll definitely go yeah. to the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. World Cup, I think he'll be done with the Wallabies. So. I think he'll be done in general, maybe. I don't know. His... He's got Probably end up in Japan issues. or something. Yeah, yeah I don't mm. know. Right, we're also checking out uh, the double. Uh, we're talking about, oh gosh, the New South Wales Waratahs uh, on Saturday at Alliance Stadium. Uh, it's his last game yeah. that he's going to play. Yeah, his last home game. So it's really, it's going to be tough. Uh, Hurricanes as well, this part of the Super Rugby, have announced Clark Laidlaw as a new coach for uh, the new 2024. Coach for 2024. So, yeah, exciting times for the Hurricanes. Um, hopefully they can... And the Sharks have got uh, John Plumtree. Plumtree, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, Rob, it's, it's so weird. You go and watch the, the New Zealand, South, uh, Australia uh, Islanders, and it just feels like we're missing. I don't know why. I go and watch the, the England rugby, and it just doesn't seem like the same South African teams. It's, it's just, I don't know if we've changed our way of style of play or whatever, but I kind of like have this twinkle in my eye when I think of us playing against New Zealand yeah. or Australia, I'm going, ooh, <laughs> you know what, this is going to be yeah. exciting, hey? because yeah. we don't get to see that style of rugby anymore, and it's just not there. Yeah. It's, I don't know whether it's the... It's, yeah? it's, it's more technical now, you yeah, know, it's way more technical. because back then you'd have like a prop who's really, really big, yeah. but Remember, these are guys who have to run the whole game for 80 minutes. So I think coaches Is it are. The weather that side that it's. It's it's it's, it's more technical. They're uh, focusing uh, more on. It's cold there. Let me uh, tell you. In phases, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's even about when they phases. come here, the way they play in South Africa, yeah. it's. You know, it's just not, you know, New Zealand rugby is expensive. Yeah. Yeah, Australian is. rugby is so expensive. Mm. We play that game well. Yeah, I think, I think with <coughs> South African teams, they were used to playing a physical game. They were yeah. fronting with that physicality, mm. whereas European rugby is more Technical. running rugby. That, so that's what it is. The minute you get the ball, it's running. And the first. Um, but they run that one two line. It's not that expansive running. Yeah, it's yeah. just that like hitting pods. Yes. It's yeah. just so boring. It's like phase play. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. phase play. Why run yeah. phase play? It's, it's like I'm just saying. It's just, it's talking about phase play, Fundi. Uh, Aaron Smith is leaving the Highlanders after the Super Rugby and leaving New Zealand after the World Cup. Is that maybe because of airport toilets? Had, had, hey. yeah, you, know, you know what happens <laughs> with New Zealand? They have like over, I heard that they have like 40 teams. Just but, So you have 40 teams and then you have to have like all these players coming through the ranks to make it to first team. So I don't think it's something to really worry about if Aaron's going because, I mean, he's, he's had a good run and there are plenty... Uh, of, of, of young, young, uh, yeah. young lads coming up. Mm, yeah. And like I said before, it's now a technical game. So anybody from first down to probably 10th team. But he is so good, Rob. <laughs> yeah. That pass, he is. my he man, is. that but is also, a pass. Also, eh? Rob, I think if yes. you look at it, every, every time there's people retiring from New Zealand, everyone's always saying, ah, nah, they It's over, yeah. Like no. but there's always new talent. Here. And they come I back. think it's the structure they have. Remember when we were talking about grassroots, yeah. yeah. I think the way they do it, that side is more like in tune. Everyone knows what they're doing from the ground up. You know? From grassroots. Right like when you're under 14, you're, you're already <laughs> Aspiring to be a national mm, team, mm. and you're not thinking like, ah, maybe if I make it, maybe if I make it, they mm. actually want to make it. Mm. So I think that's the difference, and that's how New Zealand always stays on top. Mm. Just while you boys are here, quickly, um, Dirk Fillion in here talking about the World Cup cricket, uh, the qualifiers. It, ma it makes us quite excited. Manashe? I think we'd be so happy to be there. Yeah, definitely. You definitely. guys, uh, I mean, Ten international teams coming into Zimbabwe. Uh, come on. That's something which the boys have been hoping for, and this is an opportunity for us to go and support um, our, our teams. And this take is take your shirt off in the stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Boys, listen. I think it's going to be a big weekend for schoolboy rugby. Um, World Cup is building up, eh? It's building up. It's Springboks went into their camp at the beginning of the week. I did have a chat with uh, Lindsay Vaya. And you said the boys are looking smooth. So watch out for the Boca, boys. Right. Thanks for the show, guys.
Thank you. And uh, once again, thank you very much to uh, Vita24, Graham Phillips, you and your team. Uh, it's been awesome and also part of Nourish Zim. Dirk Filun, good luck with uh, the Cricket World Cup qualifiers. It's massive, massive. And obviously, Shane and Bryce Hill, uh, we wish you all the luck for World Cup, uh, which is happening in Turkey. Yeah. Turkey. Right, guys. Also, one more thank you to Enzol Productions, who has done an incredible job here with Babwe Banta. They have given their all, and they certainly, you can see from 1 to 10, has improved one hell of a lot. So, guys, please make sure you follow us, subscribe on YouTube, like, share on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us. Cheers from us.